So we've really been talking about when setting up sharded clusters, various processes, right, rather than machines, whether physical or virtual machines. We have the shard servers, which are MongoD processes. We have the config servers, which also happen to be MongoD processes, so fairly lightweight ones on a smaller cluster. And then we have the MongoS processes. So these will form replica sets. Will be three of these, and we can have however many of these we want. So, how might we lay something out given a certain amount of physical hardware that we have to work with? So, we have to kind of map that out. So, let's look at some cases. There's a couple things you could do. Imagine we have some clients down here, client machines. Maybe these are app servers or something else. Then we have our machines up here we're going to use to form the basis of our Mongo sharded cluster. So what we need to decide here, if we given we have a fixed certain amount of hardware machines here, it looks like we have 32 total machines here to work with, is where do we want to put the MongoD shard servers, the config servers, and the MongoS processes? And there's a few different ways we could lay this out that makes sense. One question is just sort of what replication factor do you want to use? So, you know, how many copies of the data do you want in each shard? So let's start out, let's look at an example where we want three copies. So what we might do then is we might just say, okay, shard one, shard one, shard one, three member replica set. So I'll have a MongoD process for each of those. And then I'll just keep working my way around. Shard two, shard two, shard two, three, three, three. And then I have two machines here left. I'll just leave those at idle at the moment. So so each of these then would have uh, a MongoD process running on it. And member of a replica set, S10, for example, I could give that name to the replica set. Okay, so I have 10 shards now, and I have the, the shard servers, the MongoDs laid out. Now I need to put the config servers somewhere. One approach would be to just put the config servers just on any random machines in the cluster. So we could do that. I'll get, use the letter C for those, C1, C2 could be anywhere. Um, I'll just use this one, C3. Now what you might want to do though is um, the load's generally pretty low on, on these config servers, but you, you might not want to put them all, say, on the same processes from a single replica set. Rather, you could just kind of stripe them across different shards like this, if you will. Uh, might be a better approach. And the other thing you might want to do is since this would just be uh, optional, but since the first shard in the system, which I've called shard one here, has the uncharted collections, it will tend to have a little bit of extra load on it, perhaps. So maybe we don't use shard one for our config servers if we have a sufficient number of servers. So I'm going to put C1 here. So I have C, C1, C2, C3. So those are my three config server processes. So I've allocated them. And now I need to put these Mongo S processes somewhere, and I have to decide how many I want. So there's a couple options for this. One option is to put them on the client machine. So I could put a Mongo S, and I will call it um, MS, on each of these. And then what can happen is that the client app on this machine would just talk to the local Mongo S, which would then reach out and talk to the whole cluster. So this client to Mongo S traffic would then be over the local host interface here, if you will. So that's one option. So we could say, okay, we're done. Right, and then if you did this, you might want to just run the Mongo S somewhere. Maybe just pick a server, or maybe one of these spares. You could have one. Although I wouldn't assume that two Mongo S's is enough for a cluster of this whole size. Uh, but you might just have that as a just a catch-all if for just the people connecting in who aren't don't have a dedicated app server machine. So that's one possible setup. Another way to set up here would be just to run a Mongo S on every single box, and that is perfectly reasonable too. So what we would do then is that the client machines would connect to any member of this cluster at random to the Mongo S, which would be on that default Mongo port of 27017. And then from there, the Mongo S would talk to basically anything it needs to talk to in the whole cluster. But different client machines would connect to different Mongo S instances. And in fact, if you have a connection pool, they wouldn't even have to go to the same one.
So that's one layout, and I think that makes a lot of sense. It kind of keeps the layout pretty simple, you know, in terms of the Mongo S's, the rule of thumb would be just run it on every shard server. So not an unusual setup there. Let's look at one more setup. Let's suppose we had a replication factor of two, right? So we're, we're only going to use two machines per shard. Now, if you recall, generally the recommendation is to never have an even number of members in a replica set. So if you did this, you would probably want to add an arbiter to every one of these uh, replica sets. And you could do that a couple ways. One is just an arbiter for shard one. Let me call those just A. A1 is the arbiter for replica set one. Could be out here on another server and participate in that replica set. And the arbiters are quite lightweight, so this is, this is okay. So we could do something like this. The key being that the arbiter for replica set 7 should not be on one of the replica set 7 servers. It should be somewhere else. We wouldn't want to lose the MongoD process and the arbiter process at the same time when the machine goes down. So here we have our 3 dums 8 24 processes running, replica sets with two data holding members and one arbiter each over these 16 machines. Maybe then we run a Mongo S on every one of these. I'll just note that with a dot here in the corner. That's a Mongo S process. It could be everywhere. And finally, I would put my config server somewhere in the cluster. So we can do that next. And since the arbiters are on these, maybe I'll put the config servers here. Now, of course, you could dedicate servers for various functions, but you don't have to, especially if some of these functions are lightweight. If you had a larger cluster, it could make a lot of sense to do that. If you'd like to build a thousand server cluster, and imagine this just keeps going, so there's a lot of those. This kind of quantity of machines out here, what we might do then is say these are shard servers. So n replica sets, n shards. These are our config servers and they are dedicated now because our cluster is so large that just storing the metadata itself could be worthy of a single machine. And then these could be our Mongo S processes. So this would be one, one possible layout. And then I also drew one other group here, and this would be spares. Because once you get to a certain cluster size, machines are going to fail pretty often, right? If we have a thousand servers, we may have one, on average, one server per day fails. So it might be wise to have a couple spare servers ready to go. So this would be a possible setup for a very large cluster. You could still put all these Mongo S's in here. You don't necessarily have to break it up like this, but but this would be an option too. And of course then you could layer onto this data centers and, and you know where do things exist by data center as another aspect, right? So I think that goes back to a little bit of our conversation in the previous week about how the layout replica sets by data center. Um, so it would be very much akin to that pattern. Here's a quiz for us. If we have three shards, each of which is a three member replica set, three config servers, and six Mongo S processes running, how many machines might we want for this to reach this goal? And possible answers, well, we could use more. If we wanted, nine machines would be just fine, or nine machines works, but it's too low for best practice usage.